guys, Mr. Dowd here. Hope everyone's having a fantastic Wednesday. I'm going to continue working on my SpongeBob character. Uh, just as a reminder, I want you to pick any character you want to, from a TV show, movie, video game, doesn't matter, anime. Um, yeah, and you're going to 3D model them. So I'm actually going to go ahead and ungroup this because I know I already like the way it looks, but I want to get those cylinders back. So I can copy those and paste. Like that, I'm gonna lower it. So I'm just gonna continue exactly what I've been doing. It's over, give it a rotation. Cause I want it to be going through on uh, different angles, different looks. Cause obviously a sponge, they're not all uniform, there's all spots all over the place, right? So let's lower it. Let's get another one. Let's rotate this one. Cool. All right, so now it's got to do the top and the bottom of him. Let's rotate it again that way. Get it at a good height. So instead of copying that again, I'm going to copy these. Come over. Let me go off a fourth one, just a, a little difference. And just need the last side. Let's go there. Oop, keep pressing the wrong button. Remember, Control Z undoes whatever you do, along with these back arrows. Bring this one way down. Let's bring this one way down also. All right. And that should be good. Alright, let's go ahead and group this all together. And make some Swiss cheese looking sponges. Alright. I think that looks good. Next up, we'll be do, do his face. So his... So let's, let's start with the eyes. Go then, make it white. Let's copy. Actually, let's get a good size for them first. He does have pretty big eyes. So that looks good. You know what this is going to turn into? It's going to turn into... Uh, remember those ice cream truck ice creams on a stick? The Spongebob's on a stick? That's what these are going to end up looking like. <laughs> That's what it's going to be. Alright, let's get another spear out, make it small, very small, and actually it's already the right color. Actually, maybe it's a little, yeah, a little bit lighter of blue. Oh, I'm going to raise it up. Let's get that and let's raise it up so we can actually see the eyeball. There you go. Let's hold down shift and let's line these up. Cool. Let's copy that. Control V. Oh, I did not raise up. So, before I press. Bringing that over. What's this height at? 25 or so. 25. Let's make this to 25 also. Cool. And then let's center these. Cool. Alright, so that's SpongeBob's eyes. Continue next class working on his eyelashes and then the nose and the mouth. Alright. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great Wednesday. Bye. Hey guys. So, 
It is morning and I'm making eggs. I have made them before. These are over easy. Um, I usually put them in a pan that's already a little warmer than this one. So they start to cook right away. I definitely spray the pan because I don't want the pan, the eggs to stick to the pan. Some people like their eggs scrambled, some like omelets, and some like for a boil. seasoning on it. Put a little pepper on it. Tiny bit of salt. Once they start to cook on the edges is when we can cook them. There we go. And just gently. If they break, um, I mean, I don't think it's a big deal. Some people don't like that. You're trying to not get them to break, so that's why you can fold them. These on a bagel, you can put these on an English muffin, you can put them on toast, or you can just eat them plain. With no bread. Okay, so now I'm gonna put them again. stove off because they were still cooked because the, the pan is hot. So shut the stove off and go over and check on the toast. Not done. So I'll wait a bit. from the stove because if you like the yolk cooked all the way through then uh, keep this you can cook them a little bit longer eggs are a good source of protein so if you have some eggs they will fill you up They will fill you up till lunchtime. If you have eggs for breakfast. All right. So if you spread, usually, sometimes I've done English muffins. Sometimes I've done a bagel sandwich for you guys. This is just regular old bread. Wah, wah. There you go. And you have breakfast. See you guys next week. Hey Gators, welcome back to Language and Play. We are going to move on to scene number three today. We're moving right along on our outline. All right, so scene number three. This is where the characters face the conflict and try to overcome it. This is the big moment in the show. All right, so this is going to be when Vlad it's captured by the Hungarians. All right, the Hungarians are mad that he killed the two boyers, so they capture Vlad. 
All right. This is the biggest moment in the play. Then we'll have some other events happen. And then the end of this scene, Vlad is going to escape his captivity. All right. And returns to Wallachia. So again, this is the big moment in the show. This is when Vlad's going back to get his throne, right? He gets captured from the Hungarians. He escapes when they're bringing him back to Hungary and gets back to Wallachia. All right. This is a really important moment in the scene. All right. And then what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to end the play. We got to come up with a resolution for the play. All right. So whatever happens in the climax has to be resolved in the next scene. So by this time, you should have scene one, scene two, and scene three outlined. All right. You should have at least four events that happen in each scene. All right. And you see how I'm coming up with them. All right. If you're not sure, go back and watch the day before's video if you need to. All right. You have them all on YouTube. Use the resources that you have. If you come to the point and you're like, I don't know what else I can add, do some more research on your character or your event. All right. That's where I got all of my ideas from. So wherever you get your ideas from, that's what you want to be able to keep going back to. You have the power of the Internet. You have all the information at your fingertips. Go back and use it. All right. Great job, Gators. Tomorrow we're going to talk about scene four. Keep up the good work. Hey, guys. So I hope you enjoyed working on that owl rock last time. For the next rock painting that I do, I'm going to prepare the rock in a special way where I have different values of blue. So I start with a darker value of blue and it gradually changes to a light value of blue or a tint of blue. So I started off with a dark blue color first and then I painted the rock with that and then I started adding a little bit of white in the middle here and more white as I went down further. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a smooth rock. You can also do this on a piece of paper. If you don't have a rock, you can just paint a piece of paper the same way. I'm using a rock as my canvas again. And I have a little bit of blue paint here on my palette and I have some white paint. So I'm just going to grab that blue paint first. And I'm going to start painting the top of the rock with just that straight up blue. And then at some point I'll start adding a little bit of white and less blue at the bottom and more white at the bottom. So there's my blue. I'm just going to wash some of that blue paint off the brush and I'm going to grab a little bit of white and start it in the middle. And it takes some time. I may have to go back again to the top and add a little more blue. Because I don't want it to, to be big chunks of color. I want it to blend and be a gradual change of value. So there, I'm going to wash that brush off. To get all the blue off of there. And then grab some white at the bottom. But I really want to blend it in. Wash that white off and grab some more of that blue again. Just a touch of blue up at the top here. So I'm starting to like that gradual change, but I don't want to have that little stripe of whitish light blue up there. I'm going to grab a little bit more blue on my brush. Keep blending it in. Oops. Washing my brush again, grabbing some dark blue. Adding 
little bit more white again for down here. starting to look like a nice kind of like an ombre gradual change of value of my color blue a little more white <clears throat> just to get that kind of a lighter value of blue around here what oh I'm making a mess splattering my paint Okay, though. All right, I'm almost done. Okay, so I'm going to let my rock dry, and then next time I will be painting some kind of a black image on top. So we'll just do sort of like a silhouette right on top of there next time. Okay, see you then. Thanks for watching Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.